Now that we know how to write a Jones vector for a polarization state, we're going to consider what effect a polarizer has upon a Jones vector. First of all, a cartoon. So we have an XY coordinate system here, and we have a polarizer, which these horizontal lines here, just as a cartoon, are indicating that they pass the X hat state, what we'll call horizontal polarization. And as we've seen in a previous exercise, this uh, state corresponds to what we call a 1, 0 state. We'll write it that way. The 1 represents the x component, the 0 represents the y component in this case. That's the convention. So how do we write a, the effect in general of, the, of a polarizer upon any state? We'll continue to consider the 1, 0 polarizer as a special case and then we'll generalize. So let's think about the input and the output of light going through the polarizer. So we'll consider input and we'll consider output. And the reason I'm writing these in reverse order is because of the way matrices are written. By convention, linear algebra, you start with a state on the right and you multiply with elements that are written to the left of that initial element. So the input state, in general, that might be coming in from over here, we could write and say that this is an EX EY state coming in in general. So let's write that again over here. We have an EX EY state and in Jones vector notation we would write it this way. If EX and EY are real numbers then this means that this is a linearly polarized state but they don't have to be real numbers. They could have a phase relationship relative to each other in which case the state in general will be elliptical. And just to remind you that by convention, what this, this is referring in standard vector language to an EX X hat plus EY Y hat state. And we would even furthermore remember that we would be multiplying this by e to the minus i omega t. If we wanted to ask at various times what do EX and EY look like in a given plane, this full thing would give the time dependence of EX and EY. So now this is going to get acted upon by the polarizer and specifically a 1, 0 polarizer. And then the output in this case is going to be EX 0, right? We selected out just the X component of this state of this state over here. And let's think about this the following way. That that's equal to a 1, 0 state times the amplitude EX. What, I mean, what I'm emphasizing here is that if you send anything, any state, through a 1, 0 polarizer, you know that you're going to get a 1, 0 aligned state out. It has to be x hat polarized. How much uh, of the field there's going to be will depend upon how much x there is in the initial state. So it's helpful instead of just writing the final state as ex0 to break it down into two parts and to say that this 1, 0 state, that's the unit vector of the output state. It's a unit vector in the direction that the polarizer passes. That's got to be the, the vector that characterizes the output Jones uh, state. And then this EX, let's identify that carefully as the amplitude, how much of a 1, 0 state, how strong is the 1, 0 state that gets through the polarizer? So we could actually, in this very simple case, break this down into steps. Suppose we wanted to know what the amplitude is going to be of this state coming through here, and we didn't want to use Jones notation. We would say that to find the amplitude we would take the initial state, so I will I'll just write it 
uxx hat plus uiy hat. And how would I figure out how much x component there is in that initial state? I would just multiply it by the following. I'd multiply it by 1x hat plus 0y hat. That's certainly going to tell me how much x component there is in this initial, in the initial input state. In general, I wouldn't use 1x hat and 0y hat. If the polarizer was tilted at some angle, then I would have different coefficients for the x hat and y hat, but this one's particularly easy to see. And obviously, the answer to this dot product is just e sub x. That's what this dot product selects out. Then, suppose I wanted to know what the state is going to be when this polarizer acts on something. Well, I don't have to do any math at all. I just know that the polarizer's output state is 1x hat plus 0y hat. So now, I can simply say that the amplitude and the state of the final result. So the answer for the output state, for the magnitude and state of the output is just going to be ex, that's how much of the state I've got, and the state is 1x hat, I won't even write the 0y hat, and that of course could be more simply written as just ex x hat. That is the state that comes through the polarizer at the end of the day. This is its amplitude and this is its polarization. That's how you do it if you're going to do it in the sort of familiar way here without Jones vectors. Now let's solve this using Jones vectors. So the input, I'll write that down here. The input state, again ex, ey, And now let's think about this blue operation. We want to find out the amplitude. How much e x component is there in that input state? What I would want to do is I would want to multiply the x component by 1 and the y component by 0. In vector notation, this is the way we do that. This is linear algebra. This is 1 times e x plus 0 times e y. It's the same dot product written here, just written in a different way. And then, once I know how much EX is, in fact, let's even write underneath here that this is going to give us the amplitude EX. Now, what's the other part of what the polarizer does? It doesn't, just, it doesn't just figure out how much EX there is. It then assigns that amplitude to a unit vector 1, 0. So let's go ahead and write the other half of what this thing mathematically does. So now I have the amplitude EX multiplying by 1, 0. This will give me my final state. I can now write this out. Well, these two things, when multiplied by each other, just give me EX. And then this state vector here, I just write it again, 1, 0. And there it is. That's the same state I got over here, just sort of writing it out intuitively. Here I get the result by, direct, by, by sequentially considering an input state, figuring out how much x component there is in this input state, and then having an output state pointing in the 1, 0 direction with that as its unit vector. Now, importantly, these two, I will put a dashed box around these two elements, th these two things are what the, the influence of the, of the polarizer. Right, I've got this as the input, this here is the output, and that means that this thing here, I can write as 
the polarizer effect. And I like to think of it as this way, the blue part telling you how much of a component there is in the input, and the red part telling you what state you're going to have in the output. However, if you want to do this actual multiplication out of these four things, I will tell you that this P matrix in this case is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0. For me, that's harder to keep track of, not in the special case of an X-aligned polarizer, but if we go to an angled polarizer, I find it easier to write the components out in blue and red conceptually, rather than having to remember four elements here, I only have to remember two numbers because these two numbers in blue are the same two numbers we see in red. Let's Now I'm going to just set up that general angle problem for us. So suppose in, instead of the polarizer passing a 1, 0 state, we could instead of passing that x hat state, we could rotate the polarizer through some angle and say that instead it passes a state cos theta sine theta. If we rotate that polarizer through an angle theta. And let's just follow the same logic we had here for the Jones vector when it was in the particular 1, 0 state the math is exactly the same. We have an input state, which is EXUI. And now, let's look at the, in, the what the Jones notation for this polarizer is going to be. It's going to project out, instead of asking how much 1, 0 is in this initial state, in other words, how much X component there is, we're going to ask how much of this state aligns with the direction cos theta sine theta. So we're going to simply ask it this way, cos theta sine theta. That tells us how much of a component there is, if you will. It, this tells us, if you will, the E theta component. I put that in quotes because it's sort of like the E X prime component when you've rotated the X axis, but this is what I'm talking about. It's the direct, it's the, this would be the E field getting through an X oriented polarizer. This is the E field getting through a polarizer that's been rotated by an amount theta, the strength of that electric field. And then what direction is that field pointing? Following this logic down here, it's pointing that field is a cos theta sine theta state. We've just said that right here. So once again, this thing I'm putting the white box around, that's the polarization effect of a polarizer at angle theta. And you can work out the multiplication for this and see that the P for an arbitrary theta has got this expression here, cosine squared theta, sine theta cos theta, sine theta cos theta, and sine squared of theta. And this is where I want to emphasize that memorizing these four terms is for me conceptually harder then remembering to project out the cos theta sine theta component of the input state and then assign it to a cos theta sine theta output state.